your favorite character and my favorite character. Three, two, one. So. Dallin, what? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome everyone to episode 28 of the Tutor Ramble Podcast. My name is Richard. Austin over here. And we're actually going to start using our names this time so people don't call us bald one and... Glasses guy. Non-glasses glasses guy. guy yeah. Cool guy. Other guy. If you're listening to yeah. audio only, I pointed to me for cool guy, him for other guy. So. Yeah. Right. So this is a big episode. Yeah, this is an important one for us at least. Extremely important. And... we'll. Say for you why this is super important, because there's a big story behind this book and everything behind us. That yeah, you see so here. I wouldn't have actually read any of the books behind me without first reading this one. This is actually the book that got me back into reading. Then after this, I just kept reading. And I read all of these in like about a year or something. Okay. With, without Way when of I, Kings, there is no reading beyond that. Yeah. When I, though when I say have read there are a few individual books up here that are on my to read list but the covers looked so neat so i put them on there anyway you hack (laughs) example (laughs) the first lot it is next but i have not read it yet it's on display because it's got a cool cover but on the to be read list but this the way of kings basically what we're going to do this episode is something that we did before our very first episode on the podcast way back in episode one we reviewed the Wave Kings kind of. We didn't really know what we were doing. We didn't do it justice. And because this book is so monumental to us, we figured let's do a really well formatted one where we pitch this book, both spoiler free. So this is going to be spoiler free for the next maybe 15 minutes even. Maybe. And then we'll yeah. say when we're going into spoilers so that if you haven't read this book, we're going to try to convince you to read this book. Yeah. If you have read this book, we're going to possibly give some cool facts about it and also then dive into what we love about it so much, and then the uh, rest goes from there. And we'll, we'll break it down by uh, our rating <laughs> category as well. Of course. Why we like it. You know. Yes, yes. Now, The Way of Kings, to start off, just some background on this book, was published in 2010 by Brandon Sanderson. Now, if you'll notice, one of our other podcast episodes was a deep dive on Brandon Sanderson and why he is my personal favorite author, one of your favorite authors ever, if you want to jump in and as that. a As a person, like, living author, encompassing not just his writings, but his interactions with fans and, like, just the quality and the free, <laughs> the quality and quantity of books and just how he keeps producing things on a regular basis, yeah. I would say he's my favorite living author. Do I think there are other authors that maybe I like their books a little better? Right. Yes, I have those, but, like, as a just as a person, I think Brandon Sanders is one of my favorite. And I think we go into we go into all those reasons on the deep dive of mm-hmm. his Kickstarter, his lecture series, the amount of dedication to the fans, updating, and just there's so much about him that's amazing. Yeah, it's actually one of my favorite uh, episodes we did personally. Yes. Yeah, I, I thought it was so fun and finding yeah. out a lot about him. But the Wave Kings in particular, we're going to focus on, and this is Sanderson's. This is his epic in the Stormlight Archive saga. Yeah, there are four books currently out. Rhythm of War is the latest book, but this is book one in his huge saga, and it came out in 2010. So in 2010, it was published. However, I don't know if you know this, Hmm. he essentially started the ideas slash writing even for The Way of Kings in the late 90s. That long ago. The late 90s. I knew there was a previous version of The Way of Kings. I didn't know it came from the 90s. Yeah, in college in the 90s, he played, Brandon Sanderson, the author, played Dungeons and Dragons with his buddies in college. Mm -hmm. And he came up with this one cool campaign idea that he thought the story was so cool. This, This ending to his story was so cool. And But since he was playing with his friends, they didn't play it the way that he had envisioned and went, you know what, I'm going to pocket that for a book idea. So you know what idea that is? He is going to use at the end of book five. Oh, wow. Which has yet to come out. And he says it's the best book idea ending he's ever come out up with. So if you're not already excited well, for dang. book five. But this is on book one. This is on The Way of Kings. So what you're telling me, are there like, it's, there's ooh. a couple of his buddies that know how 
the way of King's ass. Dan Wells, who has a podcast with Brandon Sanderson, mm-hmm. knows the knows part of the ending to book five. And so, That's cool. yeah, it, it's very cool to be, to be in that circle, I could hmm. imagine. But yes, Way of Kings been in the works since the late 90s. He actually had a first version of it that you were mentioning. Yeah. So fun fact about Sanderson as well. He published 13 novels. He, sorry, not published. He wrote 13 novels before any of them were published. So he, he took a while to get published and a while to perfect his craft. And a lot of that was because he didn't edit his work as much. But the 13th novel that he wrote was the first Way of Kings version in 2002. Yeah. Which was the book that is, it is published today because he put that out there as a, hey, look at how bad I used to be. But this is what Way of Kings <laughs> was. But the 2010 version, this is the Way of Kings we all know and love. And to speak in one word, how would you describe this to somebody who doesn't know what they're getting into? It is the modern fantasy epic. It's, it's honestly, it's, it does all the things of classic epic fantasy, you know, the, the size, the scope, the world and all that, but wrapped in a more modern language mm-hmm. with a bit more modern pacing. So there's plenty of kind of more witty dialogue that's going on. There's a little less active description between scenes. There's definitely more action than your standard epic fantasy. Um, I've currently almost finished with the um not dragon bone but the third book in that series and it's more classic fantasy word it's a it's a slow burn but also just a really drawn out fantasy this is not that it i now. must say that one of the criticisms that when this book initially came out and i think still to this day some people might say mm-hmm. uh, is that so th- this is exactly where it comes from but at the elitist book reviews, which if that tells you something about them, their name's the elitist book reviews, they said that the book has too much exposition. And the website sfreviews.net gave the book a mixed review praising Sanderson's writing, but they extre- they criticized how long it was and the dearth of action. So they didn't think it was action-packed enough. So there are those who will say that. That's just us being fair and balanced. And beyond that, we're going to praise this book. <laughs> What was that second one? What was the website called? Uh, let's not say it again. It's okay. But as like, do S- they... SFreviews.net, I believe it was. Science fiction and fantasy? It might be. It might stand for that, yeah. Because I'm, those Maybe opinions, some, like... Yeah. Have they ever read a fantasy book? Well, apparently they read The Way of Kings and didn't like it too much. That It's, it's peculiar. I mean, fantasy in general has way less action than this, and also is more poetically written than this yeah. and yet they think the opposite <laughs> well they are in the minority because this yeah. this book the reception of the way of kings has and if you guys know goodreads goodreads is very strict the the user base gives uh, four and up is a great score on goodreads it's yeah. usually a really great score the way of kings has a 4.64 and all of the books in this series have 4.6s and up, as th- the last I saw, which is incredible. Oh, wow. So uh, one might have a 4.58. Rhythm eight, of War? Uh, I, think that might, I think that even has a 4.6. But wow. it, it balances. They always go down or up 0.01 mm. or something. But yeah, the reception's great. They, it, the Way of Kings has won the Whitney Awards for Best Novel of the Year, Best Speculative Fiction. It was nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards. All, all the praise. Great mm-hmm. book. Uh, the general consensus is that this is a great book. So I know our viewers don't always trust us. So <laughs> if you don't trust us, trust these awards. Trust the Goodreads rating. Yeah. It has a great reception. Does that surprise you, though, that it has that great reception on Goodreads? Or is that what you'd expect when you read a book like this? Honestly, it's up modern modern reader's alley. I think it it knocks all the boxes out. Like, it's not particularly weird it's not i don't know i I really do think it's within the modern era Mm. it fits right in that era and those are the people that are on goodreads yeah so i I can think of plenty of older fantasy or that's like kind of weird that probably just wouldn't Mm. do well i mean hell even lord of the rings you see a lot of modern readers kind of can't read it or they just are too bored by it so it's not written in the modern talk exactly so this has all the great aspects of fantasy mm. but packaged in a more 
consumable modern way. Yeah, so the, you're saying essentially the mass consumer, the mass reader is going to like this more because it's written to, in today's language and it's got a great story. Yeah. Got that. Okay, that makes sense. And something that might lead someone to not even read this book in the first place, we have to mention before we get into general review how long the book is. You have read yeah. you have read all of these books. You, okay, not all of them. Some of them are on display. I, 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 yeah, there's a you've there's read, a few. You've read so many books. How does this compare lengthwise to the typical even fantasy book? And fantasy books are already very long. But how does this fantasy book yeah. compare to the rest? It's long, even for a fantasy book. It there's no there's no getting around it. I mean, I think I think uh, the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. I think including and actually you include the Hobbit. I think it's something like eight hundred thousand words. Oh, I thought it total. Was, I thought it was less than that. Maybe less. Huh, okay. And then this on its own is like three hundred eighty. So it's like half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Th- this is so. Way of Kings. The Way of the Kings is three hundred eighty thousand plus words yeah. alone. I'm reading right now, so it looks like the Lord of the Rings it, plus the Hobbit is. Somewhere like over around 500,000 words for Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Oh, dang. Even shorter. <laughs> so, yeah. Incredible. But th- this book is extremely long. Yeah. And it only gets longer. Book. So, I can definitely see people not wanting to pick it up just because of the time commitment that it definitely offers. I mean, Sanderson somewhat agrees as well. When he says yeah. the... Sanderson says the first book of his that you should read... You He suggests reading this if you want to just get immersed into an epic fantasy world and you don't mind that one bit. Mm-hmm. He says, read Way of Kings. But he understands that you might want to be convinced if this is your first book of his that you're reading. There's other ones, such mm-hmm. as... I'm sure you would agree with him. He, he says you could read Elantris, which was his first book ever... Uh, published however he was also more amateur of a writer so there's that to balance he also says mistborn is a great series to start and he also suggested emperor soul which you love as a book won the hugo award i would say emperor soul is his best work so if you do want to dip your toe into the sanderson universe read emperor soul um also little fun thing is if you read elantris you'll find a lot of parallels between one of those characters and one of the main characters in here. Okay. I saw a lot of similarities, so maybe that's just his writing, but... Right. But yeah, um, so it's won a lot of awards. Uh, mm-hmm. We should probably talk about what it's about. Spoiler-free, of course. Spoiler-free what it's about, of course. So there are three main characters in The Way of Kings. There's Kaladin, there's Dalinar, and there's... Let me get it right... Shalon. Shalon. Hmm. I always say Shalon, but it's Shalon. Uh, Kaladin is a slave in thrown into uh, the army hmm. and is part of a bridge crew, and they're a bunch of slaves that carry bridges for armies to pass these large chasms and are often the cannon fodder. And his story is a lot about overcoming depression and the thrust of leadership. So he's kind of thrown into this leadership position and people kind of naturally follow him. And this book is Kaladin's story because you have Kaladin yeah. flashbacks and it's it comes from those three point of views from Kaladin, Shalon, Dalinar, and some other minor characters. But Kaladin is the story of the Way of Kings mainly. Yeah, uh, especially for this one because the flashbacks that do occur are his. Mm. Now, uh, Dalinar is the brother of the now dead king, and his is a story. He is a a man aging, aging past his prime. Um, a man who used to be this brutal warlord who is now far more subdued and trying to make his life better and the people around him. And someone that wants that already is a type of leader, but wants to be. A better one. So it, his is a story about change, forgiveness, and what type of leader you should be. And then and it doesn't help yeah. that he has these, it's, this isn't a spoiler, but has these visions and looks like he's almost going insane to his own children. Yeah. So there's a lot of complexities into this whole narrative. Yeah. And by the way, he does have the best lines in the entire book. Absolutely. I, I, I was going through just quotes of like, 
Uh, what were some great quotes oh, from the we'll, book? We'll quote Almost about, all of them are down. Yeah, when we get to spoilers, we're, we got to quote some of those. So. Yeah, and then uh, Shalon is a uh, is a low noble girl that is trying to seek the apprenticeship of Jesna Colin. And the reason why she... W- she is sister of the king. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Jesna is sister of the king. Mm-hmm. Uh, former king, actually. No, current king. Oh, current, Sorry, yeah. my bad. Um, and Shalon wants to apprentice with her mm-hmm. because she wants to steal her magical item to save her family. So, a bit of espionage. Um, but her story also kind of falls into this leadership kind of where she is someone under a, a great leader or a type of leader. And so we see in all three aspects deal with leadership. One where leadership is thrust upon you. One where you are in leadership and you must change to what type of leader and becoming like more of the reluctant leader. And then, or I mean, the leader that wants to lead well. So someone who doesn't want to, someone who does. And then Shallon shows the what it's like to be under leadership. So mm. all kind of deal with it in different ways. Right, yeah. You have Kaladin, the slave, Dalinar, the warlord turned, trying to be a peaceful leader and unite. Mm-hmm. And Shal- Shalon, the student. So yeah. these three different... I think there's something for everybody. And it's... That, that's just a quick snippet of it. And the reason you might want to read this now, especially if you have not already, is adaptations are coming. They yeah. will be coming. Of the Way of Kings, it'll be a, white, it'll be a ways off. It, it will be. It I, will I not be sounded, the first. I sounded a little too excited when I said that because yeah. I can't wait. But adaptation-wise, th- this is coming from Brandon Sanderson, right? He said, I quote, this is the year that Hollywood came calling, end quote. So he he said Hollywood has come up to him. He's had meetings with Netflix, all the streaming services that you can imagine, uh, all studios you can imagine, and they're coming and they're bringing big dollar amounts, wanting to purchase not just a way of kings, but Sanderson's works. They're talking about Mistborn series, Stormlight Archive, which is this, and all, all different things. So adaptations will be coming eventually, and highly suggest getting into this series if you've not already. It's fantastic. Brandon Sanderson also did mention that he does not want to adapt a Stormlight first. Mm. He actually did mention, so he does, unless he's forced in some way, he wants to adapt something else before getting to Sanders, to, to Stormlight yeah. because he wants to be more experienced with it. The so most Mistborn li- might come first? The most likely one is Mistborn. Okay. Because gotcha. he's also talked about stuff he would want to change for an adaptation. Okay. So there are actual there are some characters where he wish as he was writing he wanted some of the characters to actually be female rather than male. Mm. And but by the time we fin- but by the time he finished the book he's like, dang it, <laughs> I already nice. finished the book. So that's something he would want to do in the show. And knowing Sanderson, like, he's taking as much control as he can, as far as yeah. I know, of writing the screenplay and being involved. Because I think he's seen how adaptations can turn sour. So I, I love how involved he is in, in the whole entire ordeal. He, awesome. Yeah, I think he learned his lesson from the Wheel of Time. Yeah, yeah. So now it comes down to, I think, spoiler-free-wise, if you want to add anything else, a, a last pitch. Uh, we're going to give our spoiler-free rating. But any last pitch you'd say, uh, if someone has not picked up this book, that you'd say, you'd give it a try. Close to the end of the book, I was sitting alone at night, like in an empty room, reading this book, and I stood up out of my chair and cheered out loud at something that happened in the book. If that's, I mean, that's the best, uh, best <laughs> recommendation, that's someone, the best compliment yeah. I can give this yeah. book. So definitely give it a shot and let us know what you think. But if you haven't read it, well, hold on, rating first, because... Uh, spoiler, oh, sure. Spoiler-free rating. Spoiler-free rating, fine. Okay, so The Way of Kings, what did you rate it out of 10? I gave it an 8.3 out of 10. 8.3. 8.3. I gave it 9.2. Yeah. It exceeded the 9. It got the 9.2. It's an excellent book. Mm-hmm. And we're going to now get into spoilers as to why we rated that and go category by category. You ready? Right. So everyone and- that has not read the book switch off, or if you don't care about spoilers, but you should. So click off, go read the book, please read the book. 
now, all you people that have read the book, let's get into it. It's time, okay? So, first things first, emotionally. Emotional impact. What did you rate that category? I gave it an 8.75. Okay, I gave it a 9.2. Okay. And we're... Same ballpark. Yeah. You're just being a little bit more of a, hmm, a little too reluctant to give it those nines, I, I see. Hey, I upped it. I okay. did actually up my rating scale, but I was looking at the other books, and I had to I had to temper my thoughts on it, mainly because of Shallon. Mm. Like, there were real highs, but I Excellent. remember... Excellent. Shallon, dang it. I remember distinctly several times when her part came up of, like, not disliking it, but... I counted the pages of like how much, how many, how many more pages till a Kaladin chapter, and I literally counted the pages. So I didn't. That has that to much. factor uh, into it. I, well, I, it has to factor if that if you're emotionally waiting to get through those chapters. I I see I see why. But you giving it an eight seven five pretty high. How about you talk about what you liked first? All right. <laughs> how about you say why it was great? Yeah, I should. Okay. Uh, that that is like my real only negative. Okay. Um. Other than that, like. I was hooked to the book when Callan was on the edge of the honor chasm. Absolutely. That was the moment that sealed of like, I just tore through the book. I remember reading it pretty slowly up until that point, like read for like 15 minutes, took a break, then picked it back up, maybe read a chapter. Mm -hmm. But then when I got to the chasm scene, I just didn't stop. I was hooked in from that moment on. And it was just so emotional and funny. Sill giving him this poisonous flower, trying to help him. And just kind of the, the irony in that. And then Kaladin taking, giving one last chance and still making a great argument of, hey, all the bridgemen are already dead men walking. Can't You can't make it worse, Kaladin. Give it one more shot. There's literally no worse option. Can't make it worse. It's like, that's a good point. I, yeah. They're already dead. Like, I can't, like, kill them worse. The portrayal of Kaladin's depression is the best portrayal, I think you'd agree, the best portrayal of depression, mental health, I've seen in a novel, let alone entertainment. Entertain This, as a story, just to, any story that's been told, the portrayal of depression is fantastic. We'll get into that more, but I definitely agree with you. We'll get yeah. into that when we go into characters. Yeah, definitely. And I'd say for emotional impact, one of the things that Sanderson does so well is it's this slow burn. Of the, the book is so long, so by the time you're reading a couple hundred thousand words in, it has a lot of expectations and promise to live up to. Yeah. Where if you're going to read this full book, you have to be satisfied by the end, or you're going to be really upset because you wasted how much time if you end up being disappointed by it, mm-hmm. which where some is where some of the criticism comes from. But with the Way of Kings, the Sander Lanches, the where everything goes down, is so satisfying. That it, there, there's really nothing like a good Sanders, like a good Sander Lanch. Just yeah. it builds up to this moment where everything comes together. Every chapter just hits one after the other after the other. How do you would that would that overall? That's why your emotional impact's also high. Does that really affect it, or do you just look at it this as a whole? As in, were you less interested in parts, or did you like that slow burn? Did you like that anticipation? And just boom, it all hits, and oh, it's great. I do like a slow burn, like. It's one of the reasons why I realize, like, I actually can like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, so, and there's a very different, there's a, there's an important difference between a slow burn and boring. It may seem close. Like, there's be a lot of things where people say, oh, it's not boring. It's just a slow burn. Like, Rings of Power. Rings of Power is not a slow burn. It's boring. Way of Kings is a slow burn. Because it actually gets I you interested. I think you just uh, burned Rings of Power for a second. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. I see your puns. <laughs> anyway, uh, with The Way of Kings, the reason why it's a slow burn is because it gets you in quickly invested in the characters. So quick, you're already hooked by the character, and you yeah. already like them, and you're kind of rooting for them, seeing where they're going. Then also, you have a good narrative hook of what's gonna, you want to find out what's going to happen next. A slow burn means you want to find out what happens next. With boring, it just means you don't care what happens next. This is a great slow burn book. I, it's just my my. Thought I mean, you have to mention. I have to ask you this. Yeah. Where was the moment where you stood up and cheered when you were reading this <laughs> silently? What's the cheer moment that got oh, you so God. emotionally? Let's go. I, I was actually trying to think because it, it's been a while now since I read it, but yeah. I remembered it was when Kaladin swore the second ideal. 
and running off the bridge. Yeah. Yes. Running off the bridge and saying the second ideal to save Dalinar. Yeah. It was such a great moment. You know, oh god! You know I, I actually moment, did stand up and cheer. I, I, the only moment that I think rivals that in cheeringness is when mm-hmm. Elokar is just minding his own business. Delinar kicks the door down. Sorry, I'm banging your mom. Is essentially <laughs> it. It's just that that's just a great scene. That was <laughs> oh, it was so satisfying. Yeah, like just seeing this kind of this paranoid king. Which dude, you gotta calm down. Listen to Delonar. Listen to Uncle Delonar. It's time, okay? It's... Just this kid being, just kind of getting in the way of a lot of things, getting in his own way. Yeah, yeah. And then finally Dalinar just saying like, all right, enough is enough. You need to get through your thick head of like, look, I'm not trying to kill you. I could have killed you yeah. if I wanted to. I don't. So and it's such get a, off your it's, ass. It's such a badass moment. Dalinar is so cool and epic and stoic that you don't even think about, oh, isn't it kind of weird that's his uh, brother's ex is his brother's widow and, it's a it's and a little weird but also like right. at first i thought it was weird of course but then i'm like ah, it's delinar it's delinar it's, it's fine it's excused <laughs> which moving in the characters if do you have anything else on emotional impact or i was trying to think um oh i just want to say like dalinar had probably some of the most emotional moments oh hell yeah, yeah. in priceless in the priceless sword um the Blackthorn versus the Chasm Fiend. I remember that just like that was his intro scene. That was his intro, he got and I got hooked to yeah. Dalinar. Like that was like, I just loved the um, the other hot like the other prin- princes, the high princes, kind of going like, oh my god, Dalinar's losing it. He's right. the yeah. Uh, he used to be the Blackthorn. Like what's this guy now? And then they see him just single handedly body a Chasm Fiend, yeah. and they're just like. Blackthorn still got it. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Blackthorn's good point. still there. Intro. And so I loved that. Yeah, absolutely. And then I also do have, in quotes, like under emotional moments, like for Dalinar, I'm banging your mom. <laughs> like, just that's such a good. I, I, I didn't know, like, just like a whole I'm banging your mom scene was actually be like so sa- emotionally satisfying. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it finished an arc for Elokar that needed to happen as well. So it was exactly. necessary. Also for Dalinar, yeah, kind of realizing yeah. like, hey, we have to, yeah, I want people to actually act properly and be right. And, you know, they need to want that. We can't force them. And then realizing, no, people need a kick in the pants. We need some tough love. We need tough love. Yeah. We, we can't just like hope they'll do the right thing. We need yeah. to force them to do the right thing <laughs> until we don't need to force them anymore. Yeah. And, and then as far, so those are the epic moments. I will give some credit here because I know you probably disagree. Mm. Some of the emotional side with Sh- Shalon's perspective, I really like some of the woody dialogue and the scenes with Jesna is very, very cool. I He's love so Jessna. well written, and yeah. it by the end we figure out about Teravangian mm-hmm. is was the one controlling Zeth was a really cool reveal, and so the the plot elements there I thought really, and this is why I rate emotional impact higher. I thought the emotional moments and especially the story with Shalon was a good perspective of not only just the world to go along with but it was a good break and pause from us having two shattered planes perspectives because we had yeah. Dalinar and Kaladin both at the shattered planes doing lots of cool things but the world felt more real and realized with Shallon's point of view and more of the lore came with it with the with what she was learning so I I really respected it no it wasn't the most epic part but it was needed it was needed it was needed how I will we'll get actually. Want to get into characters? Let's get into characters. Okay. Characters. What did you rate like, characters out of ten? I gave characters actually the same eight point seven five. I gave characters an eight point eight. We're on basically the, dots. the same. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. The, the characters are great. Yeah, and uh, even uh, Shalon is a good character. It's just not as interesting in the beginning, especially by the end. Like there, for most of the book, it is teased a little bit of why she's interesting. Mm. But for the most part, it's she's mainly just a witty character, but not like you don't have too much of a reason why you're rooting for her. For yeah. most of the book, like I, I don't know really why I'm rooting for her other than like she's pretty witty and funny, which, which is not the same for Dalinar and Kaladin. Like there's great emotional reasons to root for them. By the end, you realize like, oh, that's why. <laughs> that's why she's having a hard time. Like she killed her father. And all the, like, just kind of emotional trauma she's gone through herself. And then so you start to really root for her by the end. That's written beautifully, though, because the reason we don't find out till later is because she bottles it up herself. 
Yeah. So it doesn't come out for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with you. She's not my favorite in it. In in her perspective, Jesna's my favorite in her in her perspective. Jesna she's, carries her chapters she's like great. I love Jesna. She's one of my favorite characters. Like she's one she's definitely up there my favorite supporting characters. Yeah. And I do he, actually I can that that's not not good for spoilers. Just spoilers for this book. Yeah, just for it's the fine. way of Kings. But Jesna Jesna has this formidability to her a even if I don't know what's going on, I know the right answer type of thing. And yeah. her, her, not only her studious nature of like, she knows a bunch of stuff, but she has that down. She takes traits from Dalinar, that badassery, but also she's smart. So she has this combination of intelligence and stoicism that makes her just a, an intimidating character without, she, it, it, I can't even explain it. Right. She has sense? a lot of the, Badass, badassness of Dalinar. Yeah. Like that kind of attitude. But she's definitely more book smart. Mm -hmm. Dalinar has a little bit more like just wisdom than her. Yeah. Because he's older. Like he kind of knows how, he knows a bit more yeah. about people. He has the street smarts. Exactly. Well, he knows people a mm -hmm. little better than uh, Jesna. Because mm -hmm. Killer Jesna cares way more about personal integrity than more of like the effectiveness. So the, the there's a lot of things she could probably accomplish her goals a little better if she knew how to just you know play ball, sweet talk, knows how if she knew how to like bribe and do, if she knew how to like navigate people, but she doesn't. She's really abrasive, and she doesn't know how to just lie to get out of something like tell a white lie. She just can't do it. <laughs> but Shalon knows plenty of that. Sorry, yeah. Shalon. I, I Shalon. Where, where, yeah, too. Shalon knows Shalon how to knows lie. That. Yeah, and but, then from her perspective, you also have Capsule there as well, which is, he's in, he's there, he's interesting enough, but, yeah. you know, he's there for a, a purpose, and he's... Yeah, his purpose I, I don't know, I, I almost forgot him completely. It's, it's fine. He's there. He's there. It's fine. But then, your favorite character, and my favorite character, three, two, one. So, Dallin, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, Sil no, Dalinar. No, Sil is great, actually, but no, Dalinar Colin. Dalinar. The Blackthorn. My All the, God. In a book where the perspective was from Kaladin, somehow I love Dalinar more. Somehow. His, the relationship he has with his children, the complexities of is he going mad and crazy, of his relationship with the king, uh, sorry, his brother, the, the deceased yeah. king, um, and the King Elokar, and with Sedeus, and how... How his, the process of Dalinar leads up to those epic moments of the priceless moment, the King Elokar, I'm banging your mom moment, of him on the battlefield being the Blackthorn. It's just, he's a presence, and when he's there, he's the one I'm always paying attention to. I, I'll i say, I it's close between Kaladin and uh, Dalinar for me. I yeah. think I lean Kaladin in this book, but it's only a lean. Okay. I mean, fair enough. He's great. Yeah. yeah. I do say, like, as the story goes on, though, I think Dalinar edges out on my favorite character. I, I mean, I remember... Especially by the third yeah. book, which the third book in the series is my favorite book. Agreed, yep. And so... I mean, I remember, I told you after I finished Way of Kings, this isn't coming from the bias of the other books. I finished Way of Kings and said Dalinar's my favorite character. Yeah. So it was this book alone. He's still my favorite character in this book. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But then you have him and Sedeus. What do you think with Sedeus, the other people surrounding him, Navani, Alucard, oh, the I, king? Touch up on those I characters. loved Navani. Yeah. Like way back in Wave Kings. Yeah. Like, I, you were an OG Navani fan. I remember. Oh, yeah. I remember just like. These are not lies. This there is, is truth. something <laughs> about like. I was just like, I want more of this character. I don't know why, but like Navani was just. Uh, no, she just had this great balance of being. She knew. She knew kind of her, uh, to, yeah, take it out of context, but she knew her place in a good way of like, she knew she, she had this kind of status as, but she was the, the, ex, the, the, she was the, the former, widow. the widow, yeah. the king's widow. So she doesn't like have power. She's no longer the queen. She's like Queen Elizabeth. She has that influence and she knew that she could do a lot of things and people won't say anything about it. Right. So she, and she does it deliberately just kind of pushing the envelope of what she can do yeah and so you could just see her more mischievous side there but also her um intelligence and inquisit 
inquisitive nature, you see where Jesna gets it. Yep. And yep. you totally see it. But also, she may not have the same analytical mind as Jesna, but she def- maybe even has a more inquisitive mind than Jesna. Ah, she's far yeah. more curious person. Like, she's just fascinating, like, bring, has a lot of joy from questions. Where Jesna is more of, I don't know if she gets a lot of joy out of it. It's more just how she works. Yeah. And so I just love, um, loved when she was on the I page. I see what you mean. But you could see Jesna gets a lot of traits from her. And oh, yeah. And is very influenced by her uncle, Dalinar, as well. In many ways, Jesna is like a mix of Navani and Dalinar. Yeah. Even though Gavimar Jesna is not. Is yeah, so... Yeah. But yeah, very, very uh, agreed. She's she's very much a presence, and I was a little surprised first time I read it that mm-hmm. I, I thought she was so mischievous that she was going for Dalinar for the wrong reasons. The, the very mm. first scenes, I was like, "Who is this Navani? What are her intentions?" Maybe I'm com- I'm think- I have this Game of Thrones mindset. Oh what, yeah, what kind of crown is she trying to wear? I, I here? thought to too, I thought she was kind of more just toying with him. Yes. At first, yeah. you think like, "Oh, is she just messing with them?" Because she can. But no, it's real. It's real no. love. It's cool. yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we got to talk about Best Paladin. Best Boy. Oh, oh, Adeline. Yeah, Best Boy, Adeline. Adeline. Oh, I, Adeline so has one of my most, like, he ha- definitely has one of the more emotional scenes for me personally. Yeah. Uh, just a moment where they they find out that Dalinar's um, visions are real. Yeah. And Adeline basically breaks down of like, I can't believe that I... I didn't trust. I didn't believe in my father. Right. I was about to send him like off to an institution. Like, how could I doubt the Blackthorn? How could I doubt my father? Mm. Which ends up leading to him making the mistake of trusting Sadius in the end, which is a good plot point. Oh, great plot point. Yes. And of course, we have to talk about Kaladin. Kaladin is such a great portrayal of depression and like proper clinical depression, not situational depression. Yeah. A lot of people get situational depression, you know, and it trick the book tricks you because I mean, situationally, Kaladin has a lot to be depressed about. A lot of stuff happens to him, mm-hmm. and so he has a lot to be depressed about. But in the book, you if you pay attention, you realize that when bad stuff is happening, Dalinar is actually not that depressed. Like it, it, it's not as worse. His bottom is when nothing's happening. When things are okay. Did you say Dal- uh, Kaladin? Kaladin, my yeah, bad, okay. sorry. When For Kaladin, when something actively is like going wrong, he's actually operating better than when nothing's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's worse. And that's more like clinical depression. You right. know? So I thought it was a great representation of that. Um, and you have Bridge 4 around him, Rock. You have the Amaram, who we find out. Moash. About. Moash, yeah. yeah. So a lot of uh, Bridge 4 feels like a brotherhood. It's just it's all, bridge this, four, baby. this whole book has a lot of great tropes played well. Yeah. And so it just has your a little fellowship trope of you got you your got the, band, you got your you got your gang, they're all here. You got your you got your fellowship trope, you got your kind of political drama trope with Dalinar and all of them. You have um Shallon with your yeah, mentor you have your the mentor, the mentor slash wizard slash, you know, whoever is exactly. so a trainee. It, yeah. It's a lot of the a lot of books would do one of them. Well, then let's move into plot. This does all of them. Because this, talking about the plot and the tropes that take yeah. place, what did you rate plot? Uh, I gave the plot an 8.25. And I got to be honest, that's high for the, it balances out because of the the highs. Like Kaladin and Dalinar would go way higher. But Shalon for me brings it down. I gave plot a 9.5. Like a masterful, master for a level. Just a, I can't give it a ten because I'm an asshole. Okay, <laughs> nine five is just an incredible for me. That I, I okay. Let me hear your eight two five BS. Go ahead, go ahead. Eight two five. Let's hear it. Well, I I like a again. Eight two five is high. Yeah, it is. It is. So I'm not like I'm not dumping on it. No, I know you're clearly, not. clearly. No. But there are definitely aspects of the plot that probably could be trimmed down okay especially with shallon i think things could have been interwoven a little better um i think there's some aspects of kaladin that maybe go too long dalinar's i think is just perfect i don't think there's anything there's no plot stuff i would really cut from dalinar's um but yeah no it's just 
I there would be I think it would be better a little shorter. Okay, so I'm gonna go through a list here. Mm-hmm. First, I'm gonna strawman you. So you're saying you could write a better book? Huh? Yeah, definitely. Okay, now I'm going to ad hominem <laughs> you, you asshole. Okay, <laughs> now I'm gonna I'm gonna run through all the fallacies, and now yeah, I'll yeah. get to what I think. Okay, I see. I see your point. I take it. I collect it. It's still good. It's not just good. It's, it's great. No. Eight point two five is great. I mean, I, obviously, I'm coming from perspective. What I was mentioning earlier about Sh- Shalon's perspective as well. I think it's just a perfect mix, a perfect formula of intrigue about the world. You have Shalon's mm-hmm. perspective here in Colinar, like a oh, Carbranth, Carbranth, sorry, mm-hmm. in Carbranth, finding out so much about the world juxtaposed with Kaladin the slave, Dalinar the leader. You get all, it, it makes you, the world feel so realized. And yes, I get at times Shalon's thing, like her thing happens fast. Her avalanche kind of just goes boom, boom, boom. That felt very fast and jarring, which is maybe why I don't give it a 10. That, you know, just being a little bit nitpicky like here and there. But just as an epic fantasy novel, I, I read it and just went, like, what am I? Who am I? To say, like, <laughs> come on, it's just such a beautifully put together and strung together, like you're saying with the tropes. It has these generic fantasy tropes, like most stories have follow tropes, of course, but just executes them so well. It's so simple. Sedeus betrays Dalinar. It's pretty simple in concept, but the way he strings it out of showing Adeline's trust for Dalinar and then, uh, sorry, not trust, you know, thinking his father goes insane and then seeing, oh my God, my, my father was right all along. Of course, he's right about Sedeus. And Dalinar convinces us that Sedeus is okay. And so the twist... The twist did get me. The twist, is, it's such a great twist because they show, they, he walks you right up to it so where you should think it, but you don't. Because he's like, no, you can't. It's too obvious, Sanderson. You're not going to... And he does. And it, it makes it such a great twist. Mm-hmm. Along with... You also have the interludes with the uh, with the Parshendi. And the, it, it's just such a... It's such a complete work to me that I really respect it for for the it, the introduction into Roshar that it gives. Mm-hmm. That's... As a, as a plot, it's just so... It just, to me, seems so clean. Although I can see more <sighs> negative sides of Shallan's being too drawn out Khaled and sometimes cut I, I see your point that there's, I just wanted to express why I love there's it there's so also much. not it's not just Shalon but okay. for me a like the 10 out of 10 plot is where everything fits like a puzzle and you can remove nothing okay I, I think that's the, the perfect plot is one where you remove if you remove one thing it doesn't work so it's a cut of all cut of all fat what's the biggest thing you would remove Plot wise, oh, there's there's plenty of scenes in every single character. Okay, let's that, not say plenty. Can we use less harsh it's a, words? You're hurting, it's a you're hurting big my feelings. Book. Sanderson's gonna watch this tomorrow with his kids. <laughs> you can't just say that. Like, well, <laughs> my point, and so now every scene can be justified as oh, it's character building. Okay, yes. which fair enough. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is. Uh, I want to hear one scene, but let, let, let's get let's get to it. Oh, I mean. Uh, going down the list with Kaladin, yeah, you could maybe cut the the intro scene of him being dragged to the actually dragged out to the uh, camp. Not really necessary. Don't need that dragged one. Dragged out to the camp. He's in the cart, going okay. out to the camp. Don't really need. I could start him in the camp. While well, he's in the camp, you could but, cut but the. No, that's so necessary. Because, Is it? Yeah, because you have him showing his healing abilities with the other prisoner. Um, the other guy that's with him and showing the effort he tries to give and then the reluctance of uh, it, th- that interaction plus Syl coming by. and the, I thought that was so necessary. It was great. Those things could have happened in the camp. You know what? I'm going to go back to what I was saying. So you think you can write a better book? <laughs> My point is no, I, I, I do like the perfect plot is one that You don't even is, have to think about. It's just it worked. It's okay. yeah, where everything is completely necessary not okay. just for character but for plot as well so you know gotcha. a perfect joke in a uh, book or a television show is okay. one that not only is funny but also tells you more about the character and cherry on top gives a hint to the later plots if, if mm. it somehow factors into the plot so it, it has to do multiple things okay where brandon Sanderson gets like close to a 10 on plot for me is emperor soul it's his novella which off the there is so, okay. no fat on that. Every single line, 
every single scene is necessary. It not only is entertaining, but pushes a plot and tells you more about the characters. I see. Wonderful. Well, this is not a succinct book, of course. It is a yeah. lengthy one. So I guess in the length of it, you can yeah. find things that you disagree with. And adding to that, the something that Sanderson improves on later is with his plot is... It's mainly his world building for me. There's a lot of stuff that is maybe set up and teased, but I don't think his world building... I think his world building is pretty shallow Okay. in this book, and it's not very deep. So I, I found myself like... <sighs> oh, my... Oh, well, let's get to world building uh, in a, in, when we yeah. get to that category. I, I take your point with plot. I, I see what you mean. I just... We, we disagree, but <laughs> I, can, I can see your point. So dialogue. What did you rank? This is, we're, we're definitely going to disagree, disagree on dialogue. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I rated it well. It's a 7.75. Yeah, I gave it a 9.5. <laughs> we're definitely going to disagree. Okay, you're better. You're more well-read than me. This isn't the best. I've read better stuff. Look at me. I've read so many books. I like it! Okay? I love it! I want it! I want more! I don't even know. I'm not even going to ask you a question. Screw your seven. It's a no, no. Okay. It's a nine five, and here's why. It's modern fantasy. All it's right. written. It's not your po. It's not your purple prose of. It's going to describe every single inkling of the air and the moisture around you. No, it's mm-hmm. not the most poetic. It's not the most like you don't read a line and go, "Oh my God, this was crafted by Picasso." No, you. It's such an easy, great, and by easy, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean such a readable, understandable common tongue adventure that brings you to i don't have to to, for a second pause until well i'm dumb so like i have to look up 27 words like every chapter but for a normal person you're just reading this it flows it's constantly there and there and there the reason i'm so emotional about things the reason i fall in love with these characters i have to attribute a lot of that to the way he wrote it and just the it's he's not reinventing anything he's just writing he's doing his thing and on top of that, I am being a little biased, a little biased, because look at the length of this book. Look at the length of all of his books. He has to get some extra credit for the fact that he is churning out books like they are pasta. Like he's just rolling through them, making penne, making spaghetti, rigatoni's coming out like nothing. I have to give credit for the quality and quantity of his work. Like he, there's no right for his quality to be that high with the quantity he is publishing brandon sanderson you sir i know he's watching of course he's watching yeah why not of course hey sanderson he's (laughs) watching this in prep for the interview we're doing next week of course oh of course of course (laughs) sanderson is a genius when it comes to that master class okay let's move on the world building let's not no (laughs) what are you doing you're just gonna skip me on this (laughs) yes i'd much i don't want to hear it (laughs) I don't really know. <laughs> I'm rating it 7.75. I like it. The The only thing, like, here's a lot of the positives. Yeah, go ahead. A lot of the positives that other books, like, really amateur books feel. So, like, I would say um, the Lacanus trilogy. I do like the series. I like the trilogy quite a bit. But one of the hallmarks of more uh, beginner amateur writers is characters sound the same. Mm. And that's not the, that's not the case with Sanderson. He gives a unique voice to every character, okay. every main character. Okay. A lot of the side characters mm. sort of blend together, but that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So th- those are some good stuff. On Wait, pref- that wasn't the bad? Huh? That w- like, now you're getting into the bad stuff? I'm saying more good stuff. Okay, okay. Keep I- going. I'm, Keep I'm going. going good stuff. Keep going. All right. Um, you're right. It is easy to read. It's easy to follow. Like, okay. Okay. For, for okay. me... Uh, maybe on a preference level. Like if I was given, you know, something, maybe what I think would be objectively better written versus Sanderson, I may prefer to read Sanderson just because I can tear through it. I don't have to stop. It doesn't make me digest. I just have, I can just run through it. So one it's faster say, to read for me. One would say that's excellent. Almost nine worthy. So, some would say, <laughs> some would say that is excellent. Well, I'm just saying. It is excellent. Okay, and go, I want to hear However, some of the ads. However, it that. is not poetic in its totality. Oh, there's a lot of this book that is pretty quickly forgotten. Like a lot of it. Where, but it has some great banger lines. It has some great lines and great poetic moments, 
but the entirety of the work isn't that way. And, you know, my God, I I hate to do it, but Name of the Wind? It's poetic all the way through. Like, you turn to a random page, and that stuff is just poetic gold. Like, it, it... it is brilliant lines, like perfectly well written. Like it's the perfect line for the story. That's why it gets such a high score for me. Now everything else about that book sucks dick, but it's not the same with Sanderson. So it it, it does come down to preference, but a lot of the lines are forgettable. It's not <gasps> poetic all the way through. It's not really perfectly written, but it is. Very quick and fun to read. Uh, okay, okay. Well, that, <laughs> it, that's the biggest I'm still giving it a 7.75. That's still high. That's that, the, get out of here. That's By the way, really good. to the viewers, look at the first episode we ever pushed out. He did raise his rating, so I will give him that. I did. You raised your rating, rightfully so, before you gave it like a 7.2, something terrible. I did raise it. I did raise the I'm, rating. I'm so yeah. glad. Now, the biggest thing, though... In the disagreement for dialogue, then we'll move on. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. But the the big oh, I'll let you respond. <laughs> the, <laughs> the biggest thing with dialogue that we disagree on is I don't think the ten means it's the most poetic or the most uh, crafty. Like on the scale, I don't I don't give, and this just completely is up to how you rate mm-hmm. things. But ten to me isn't that it's written the most beautifully. Beauty is one of the things in good dialogue, but I give a lot of credit to the greatness of it because of everything I mentioned, that I respect and regard very highly. Mm. That's the difference. But it's not just... Point taken. It's not being poetic. Mm-hmm. It's mainly about being remembered. So th- I, I can think of... Uh, I, I would say Hyperion is a book that is... The dialogue yeah. is better in that okay, book. Okay, so quotable lines. Well, not just quotable lines, but the dialogue just line on line yeah. is far more memorable and definitely seems like it is the best. Like, you can't write the line better yourself. Gotcha. Oh, you... S- yeah. You Don't say it. I think there are lines that you go, like, oh, he could write that better. Oh, okay. Not you, okay. Not <laughs> he could write that better. Gotcha. But it, it's so- there's something about that where and then there's also structure and like uniqueness. Okay. If it okay. if it does something kind of unique with the writing style or brings something new to it. Okay. But to be fair, with I mean, g- given credit to there being three hundred eighty thousand words in there. Also absorb making me absorbed into the story. Like through the prose, yeah. you actually can absorb someone into the world. Tolkien is the king of this. Number one. Don't There's you nobody. You know, I give Tolkien. You know what I think of Tolkien. He's the greatest. Yeah. It is not just Tolkien's world yeah. that is absorbing. It's how he writes and his prose uh, just brings you into the world in how he does it. If it was written differently, his like and his world was the same, it wouldn't absorb you. Yeah, I'm reading Where, The Hobbit right now, and The Hobbit's beautifully written. It's it's amazing. Sanderson, very interesting world, but I was not as absorbed into the world building. Mainly because of the writing. He doesn't write it in that same absorbing way. He's more fast-paced. It's more modern writing where you're quick to the plot. More about the witty dialogue and moving on to the next things. Where it's not as absorbing into the world. Sanderson, I can preface, click off. Click I preface off. this all with, no, I really like even, it. You know what? He clicked off. It's, yeah, it's over. Yeah, gone. Wow. <laughs> wow. Point taken. Okay. If, I, I if, I I give, if I give Tolkien a 10... I can't give Sanderson like a 9.5. Why not? <laughs> I just can't. My question to you again is why not? <laughs> There's right. other stuff between uh, I think we, Tolkien and Sanderson. You, you know what I'd say? World building. What did you give world building out of 10? <laughs> what was your rating for that? I gave it an 8. I actually raised it a little bit. Okay. I gave world building a 9. Yeah. It, it, I think our big disagreement, you said something earlier that shocked me. I, I think a, in this book, the world building's a little shallow. Oh, my goodness. Now, in all honesty, yeah. this may not be down to the world that he has crafted. Shallow, though. But more how he wrote it. Because okay. th- the more I think, like, if you go through the wiki and you read it, like, going through it again, kind of going, oh, actually, there is a lot here. It's just while reading it, I was not as absorbed into it. What do you mean by shallow? There's a lot of stuff going on now 
but there's not okay. a lot of history to it. And then you ask like the reasons why something is. So uh, an example would be uh, the safe hand. It's just a thing. Like it's a part of the world where, and even by the fourth book, that's not really explained why. It's just a thing. It's, oh, it's fantasy. It's weird. Mm -hmm. It's just an, it's a, it's a surface level identifier or women read and men don't. Okay. Why? A lot of this comes down to the why. And when it comes to the magic system, he has that down. The why is clear on magic, on how the magic works. I think, well, history I think the, and the, the world the itself, and not as much. It's throughout the, the history. It's just not stated outright. Yeah. You find it throughout the story why that is, right? Well, why did they not? Why women don't. Why, why do only women, women read? read? Yeah. I thought that came from the history of, of just war and what war was. But it was women, it's not seen as, the, you know, men are seen as the warring and knights and the traditionally are fighters. And it's mm -hmm. seen as a woman's thing to read, read and write. I, st I still don't think that's like a great reason. Like, I, I guess maybe it is a reason, but. I mean, it's based on the real world, though. I mean, <laughs> for how many <laughs> years, though, in the real world, it's like women couldn't, like 100 years ago, we're talking, or like, yeah. women didn't go to school. Sure. Generally, so, in, in lots of countries, right? It's, so it's based on, like, what it's based on real world nature of. Oh, this is something I'm taking from the real world. I'm putting in a fantasy element. Oh, let's you know, uh, let's reverse this. And he kind of toyed around with it, in that instead of women not being allowed to go to school, it's like we're seeing that as only a woman's thing. Men don't have time for that. So it's using mm -hmm. a real world element and twisting it a little bit, which makes it neat. I thought it was cool. I guess I, I just see that more surface level, and okay. I, I can think of other examples of, of the kingdom itself, yeah, like kingdoms and what kind of cultures they have. It seems very cosmetic rather than, and now, again, I preface this with this book. Those get mu they, it's delved into better in the other books okay. and the more why. But I, I, I honestly, I'll give Wheel of Time. Like Wheel of Time's world building is much better because th there's especially some moments in Wheel of Time where the cultural the cultures feel very real and. You can you see the snowballing effect of certain actions and certain beliefs and how they change over time through history onto where we are today, mm. and it's like you see the entirety of the history by the end, and it it's definitely has a more real feeling. And the cultural clashes and differences, there's far more friction, and there's a reason why. This one, it just doesn't feel the same way, like, and that now. The reason why I give world building an eight still, with all the things I've said that are criticizing it, magic is awesome. <laughs> the magic side of it, all my complaints I, I are so not. Much. I hate you. <laughs> what? <laughs> For, when you give an eight something and go on a 10 minute tirade about <laughs> everything you dislike, I don't like you anymore. It's what? Over. <laughs> it's, 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 I, who does that? <laughs> I give it an eight. I hate this. I hate this. Okay, here's a good I don't it's, hate any of these. I just like, it could be improved. It could be better. How you start with some, have you ever heard of a sandwich? You start with a nice good old bread, and then you talk about that crappy ham in the middle, then you end it with something good. Okay, let's, let's sugarcoat it more. <laughs> that's, so, that's so sad. But I'm trying to justify my lower score to you, because you seem I, uh, to take offense. I do. <laughs> With no other book, too. You know how much they, like Stormlight Archives is my favorite ever. So. Yeah, no, and yeah. but here's the thing: the magic system, awesome. Yeah. It's so one on the surface level, it is cool looking. Hell yeah! It is awesome looking, and then yeah. you go on to why, and there's a bunch of you love all of the connections to the culture. It connects to the civilization. It connects to the kind of science on how the world works. What. I would say, I think Sanderson's like the king of magic systems. Mm -hmm. He's the king of that. So, yeah. wonderful magic system. And I do account, I do put that into world building. So, that's why I give it an eight. It's great. I mean, you got the spren. Oh, yeah. How awesome are the spren? I love the spren. It's one of my favorite parts of the book. And Syl, I mean, Syl's just an awesome creature. Or, or, She's a great character. Great character. What, what do you, would you consider, a, a, what, do you, what would you call a Syl in book one? Creature-like? Or how would you describe spren even? Ethereal forms of nature. Oh, nice. 
I, I like read. That. I like that a lot. <laughs> but, now, but you have eye color discrimination, that element of the world building. You have, sh- yeah. you, you didn't even mention shards, shard blades, shard plate, the ancient relics infused with stormlight. Stormlight! Yeah, Storm- ma- yeah the magic, magic system. system. I but like all that I'm stuff. I'm describing it particularly, okay? <laughs> you have the, no the, complaints the, here with magic how system. How it's infused with the, uh, the currency. How the currency is been. It's so I cool. will say, you I think that sto- is the okay, cool- give credit. Hold on. coolest part no, on of the give cultural credit. system give is credit the, to the No, give credit to the storms, the high storm, and how the plant life is all adapted and is evolved based on the high storms and some hide and shrivel up to protect themselves and how this affects the entire nature and the heralds. You have the heralds and the knights radiance, this intrigue, the thrill. What is the thrill? What are the desolations? What is this Vorn All good religion? things, but you actually do bring up another complaint to oh, mine. Oh, are you kidding? Yeah, and it's actually still a problem, but book yeah. four is there's the modern stuff, yeah. and there's the modern history, and then there's like ancient thousands of years ago stuff. There's a chunk of like 4,000 years where apparently just nothing happened and like absolutely no idea the sun and maker it's and a left weird car, you have that it, it, yeah. I, I just think it's weird where a bunch of other stories have a much better like progression through history and sanderson's world is very much like yeah like four or five thousand years ago like you got a bunch of the old historical stuff and then like nothing happened for like four thousand years and then like we're here we're now in modern times he says and what's necessary the history seems really Shallow. Well, in a left, that's one of a that's left, my part. A left car wasn't a left car until the Sunmaker. That was his name. Was it the Sunmaker or the Sun? The one that brought a left car together originally, yeah. because they were just a bunch of little separate high princes that controlled their different areas. So it's necessary for the story. Like, well, he doesn't need to go off on tangents about what happened. But what was and, before that? It, it, there's a bunch of you were where do more, songs so. come from? Why is their culture the way they are? Why are they different? Why why are the cultures different? Why do they have such friction between them? It, why do why do they talk differently? There's a bunch of stuff that, and then see all these questions I don't know. you're asking, and some of them I think do have answers. But all these questions you're asking by book four, they don't. Which ones? Okay, well, keep keep on waiting for now. But, I, I know, yeah. but mainly the history part. There's a big yeah. gap in history, and okay, I wish it had a bit more fleshing that, out. Okay, I see, I see. But uh, but that, I as actually, far as all your questions go, wouldn't that add to yeah. all these questions you have after the Way of Kings, right? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it add to your intrigue of the world building system when there's more mystery to it, or do you want the answers? Like you're upset that I I didn't wish get the that kind of stuff was teased more. Where both Wheel of Time and uh, Lord of the Rings does a much better job on teasing me of the ancientness of the history. Okay. Where you feel the age. I don't feel the age in Way of Kings. It feels like nothing existed and then we're here. I, I don't feel that same age where both Wheel of Time and uh, Tolkien does a great job of all these little stories and the songs of things that have passed and you see the the ancient uh like these old frictions between people and why what and the, the land itself and you see the age of the land and it's on how it's changed not once but like multiple times and passed between different peoples you feel that you get a feeling I think you're of underplaying time. A little bit. i think i think you're underplaying it a little bit there i are... still gave it an eight like i'm saying like <laughs> i like it's just tons. it's just more subtle so you don't you don't like these you, you don't like the subtlety of it. You wish it was definitely. It's not subtle it. by the fourth book. Like it's not, he just doesn't focus on it. Focus on the. I've read all four books. Well, focus on like the age of the world, essentially, like what yeah. happens here. Here, yes, yes. I mean, I'm not particularly with the age of it. I just mean your complaints about your complaints about what happens with uh, the explanations in book one is that you didn't like how. I I don't need to like narrate that, but. Okay. Like a good song or two. They're kind of like a little fairy tale. What is with tale. you and songs? Okay? I like a good song in a book. I You're like wrong. it. I do too. But <laughs> but no, that that is my thought. I think it could be fleshed out a bit more of history-wise. Yeah. It has a bunch of stuff in modern, like the plants, the all this stuff. Great. Mm. Wonderful. But I don't feel the age of the world where that's a big factor for me on world building. So I give it the eight, not like the nine or the ten. I gotcha. So where I differ then is mm-hmm. the age of the world 
with your complaint about the gap between the 4,000 years to today, essentially with the heralds, mm-hmm. I felt, I sometimes feel when I'm reading a, a book and getting, getting involved and immersed in the world, what matters to me is what matters to the characters. And to really immerse me into a world and for the world building to be effective, if you're to explain to me, and, and this is what the narrative style is for Sanderson. Now, Tolkien, it's third person, at least with Hobbit, it's third person omniscient more so. So you yeah. can describe the world and it's more like a story being told to you at the hearth, right? You're explaining the story and you can talk about these tales in the background. Whereas when it's character, uh, character focused point of view, does Kelvin really need to know about what happened 600 years ago and the lily pad over there? No, but then you find out you're you're also on a plane. There's parts with the Prescendi, and we're finding out history throughout there. We find out a lot more than I think you're inclined to say. Here's the difference. Okay, if a book was focused on that, there's plenty of books where like it is narrow focused. Yeah, and so I wouldn't really be as upset with it. But for this one, it it is a grand epic fantasy and has tease of how big it is, and it it's clearly like big. But it doesn't seem very deep. That's my oh, that's man. my problem. Where a book like Rage of Dragons uh, does such a good job because because it's a revenge story. It's like tunnel vision for the main character. You can clearly tell there's a bunch of stuff going around to the outside, but it doesn't care about the character. It's one POV, so you can get away with like ignoring a bunch of the stuff going around him, and it it's not teasing the rest mm-hmm. of the world. It's focused on him, and you can get away with that. So, like, it, it's not that story. This is epic fantasy. It's this huge world with this great match yeah. system, and all there's a bunch of these different nations and this culture that's weird and different to us. All this big stuff, and it feels like a large puddle rather than like a deep, like ocean okay so well you obviously have the interludes where you go off into the other lands and could and you find out more throughout the interludes of roshar in the first yeah. book i'll agree they don't go into uh, outside of a left car and carbranth there's not a deepness of other cultures other than in the interludes the interludes are some of the better parts and it's it's but, very helpful for that right side. but from, from this from this perspective i mean it's a long novel but the long the the length of the novel has more to do with the growth of the characters and their journey yeah. throughout it, which it, yeah, to, that's I give characters yeah. a higher score than world building. No, I get you, but with world building, so you're the from your perspective, the world building isn't as excellent because of this. I, is mystery the wrong word? Because I I think by the end, a lot of the things that are said. And the lack of understanding of some things leaves it mysterious of a yearning to want to learn more about the world. It successfully did that for me in many, many ways. See, and I, I, it I, didn't do I, the well, same for me. Where I'm, I'm curious about what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But you're I'm not, not curious, curious about, the about world. what happened. Where a difference. When I was reading Lord of the Rings yeah. and Merry and Pippin are talking with the Ents. And they're bringing up and talk about how well, the Ent wives are all gone. Mm. And, and tells the story about how the ant wives they had a the ants and the ant wives had a disagreement, and the ant wives left, and the ants have tried looking for him and can't find him. And I was like, it, it, it absorbed me, and I was like, well, what happened to the ant wives? Yeah. And I looked at the map. I I went on Reddit. I was looking for him. Like okay, I, so, I, I wanted to know you, the history of the read, world. Uh, when you read Way of Kings, and it's like, what happened to the Knights Radiance? You you didn't have that. That's same an reaction. active plot point. What do you mean? That's different. <laughs> what do you mean that's different? And to be fair, I did clarify. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of stuff in modern. Mm. There's a lot of stuff at the Heralds, li- literally 4,000 years ago. That there's two points in history that there's yeah. a lot of stuff about and interesting things. There's a bunch of stuff on where, where they got there. Not much. Well, you have a lot. A lot of that history involved, too, is with the Voren, Voren religion on top of that. Where What was so funny? <laughs> no, I'm just realizing yeah. that like we're really... Uh, achieved our name like i've rambled about oh, the world no, yeah. for we're, so we're, long we're, this is we've been going on this for i don't i'm so this scared is, to look at the time but it, it's it's been a while but <laughs> we, we do need me. to <laughs> okay. we no, wrap it up. i'm interested though okay <laughs> i know wait let's see how much time's left on this it's been two to ramble everybody <laughs> well i'm not editing this full thing there's no way <laughs> this is way too long <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i I'm going to leave you with one last question, okay? All right. 
explain to the camera as yeah. as our outro. I'll let you go. Why do you hate Brandon Sanderson? Go ahead. <laughs> Explain. I explain. love Brandon Sanderson. I gave his book an eight three. That's a good. That's a great score. <laughs> I like it. Why am I the bad guy here? Because you talk about it so negatively. It's so strange to me. Someone that likes a book so much can talk so negatively about a masterpiece. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> just what it is yeah yeah i mean it, it's your your preference makes total sense it's yeah. it does if uh if i'm putting myself in your shoes i can see how you could rate world building honestly from your perspective you should rate it a five from how it sounds okay i'm not if you hate it that much <laughs> don't hate it there's a lot to like but there's more to love it'd be hilarious let's keep going <laughs> just make it worse we almost outro and then we just get back into it nah, all right <laughs> yeah. I, I do you want to cover anything else about the book because I mean, Absolutely not. I'm afraid that I'm going to say something that I like, and then you're just going to go, well, actually, you know, statistically speaking, I think the world building wasn't, th- it, was, it was shallow. You're shallow, Brandon <laughs> Sanderson. Shallow? <laughs> How is it shallow? That It is so deep. Tell me, tell me about the Shattered Plains. Is that shallow? Is that, is that too shallow for you? Or the deepness and the deep and car brand of learning about who the void bringers are and this mystery behind them and who are these heralds? What are these shard blades and shard blades? <laughs> these spren that magically, they're connected to emotions? What You're they bringing up all the stuff on why I rated an eight. This is BS. <laughs> You're bringing up all the things of why I rated it. Well, but yeah. you ignore that as part of the deepness. You said you shallow. Are, you rated it's it. shallow. You, can, you said Roshar was a pond. A pond. It is a gigantic ocean. It is the Atlantic. Pacific. The Pacific is deeper than the Atlantic. Is it? I don't know. But it is deep. Okay, look. You can tell me to my face that Roshar and its yeah. history and its cultures and its people yeah. has a deeper history Don't you than dare. Lord of the Don't Rings. Don't you dare. Okay, you know what? Really? You're going to tell me You gonna tell me that to my face? It, you know what that's saying? It's like saying to me like, oh man, I think, I, I legitimately think that Joaquin Phoenix is just the most, spe- like a spectacular actor. And then you bring up and go... Oh, yeah? Who's a better actor? Keanu Reeves. Of course I'm not going to disagree with you because Keanu's the nicest guy on the planet. But I think it's completely fair yeah. that I rate, for world building alone, Lord of the Rings, 10. And Way of Kings, an 8. Of which the, the Listen, world building I'm not gets about better that. from here. Richie, Richie, I'm not complaining about your 8 whatsoever. I, I think yeah. your 8 is a... It could be a very fair score. What I'm complaining about <laughs> is the is your attitude toward an eight. Act like it's an eight. Don't say I give it an eight and then destroy the book. I understand your perspective. I see with your preference why you'd write this an eight and I'd give it a nine. That's totally fine. It's just I don't want to hear. They don't want to hear. If anyone's listening, this is insane. There's no, we are an hour and ten minutes You're in. Yelling I'm gonna, the mic. You're gonna. I'm gonna have to edit. For the next 20 days, this video's not coming out until April 17th, okay? You're, you're going to also have to edit more because you're screaming in the mic. Oh my god, I'm going to have to lower the volume You've clipped now. the mics. <laughs> There's so many red spikes. I'm I making it worse. Oh All right. God. Okay, oh. so I think that was a great discussion on Oh the no, book. it wasn't. Help. What do you Help. mean? We need to hire somebody now. <laughs> oh my god. You have a whole week to edit. It's fine. Six days. Six days. Oh, Lord. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, thank you for sticking around for so long. Um, hey, if you watched all the way through, comment cabbage. In no the comments. way. If I see a cabbage, I am going... We need to... We're, we're, give, we're giving you our phone number. <laughs> we need to talk to you. Because we'll, we'll, we'll send you a link to a Discord if you comment cabbage at the end of the video. You, if anyone comments cabbage on this, you are, yeah. you're an OG. Oh, yeah. You really are. Alrighty. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll see you. We'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your day. Hopefully, with me. <laughs> bye bye.